Fentanyl, just one pill can kill. One pill can kill is the message that we hope you will remember from this series. Over 150 people die every day from overdose and poisoning related to synthetic opioids like fentanyl, and that's five in the state of Texas. Many of them are young people, children, teenagers, and the numbers are growing all over the country. In our series on fentanyl, you'll hear from professionals and you'll hear from parents about the challenges we are all facing from this deadly drug. Today, we're gonna to turn to medicine, and we're gonna talk about how fentanyl actually kills. And I'm very pleased to have with us Dr. Mark Gamber. He is the EMS medical director uh, in the city of Plano, and he's also the Plano Fire and Rescue Emergency Physician. He's had over 20 years of experience, and probably a pretty stressful job. Welcome, great to have you with us, Dr. Gamber. Thanks for having me, honored to be here. So. One of the things that I'd really like to, our audience to know more about is how does fentanyl kill? What's the process? Fentanyl kills through respiratory depression. Any opiate, of which fentanyl can be uh, an incredibly potent opiate, uh, causes you to breathe more slowly. And when taken in concentrated or large amounts, it will suppress your breathing. It'll suppress your respiratory drive to the point that you're not intaking enough oxygen. And you know, over a period of minutes when your body doesn't have enough oxygen, eventually that starts to cause brain death and it starts it will eventually lead to your heart stopping. And how long do you typically have and does it is it affect everyone somewhat the same way or does obviously I guess amount but your weight and health? That's a great question. It affects everybody a little differently, so there's not a, a clean answer to this. Um, some of it is based on the size of the human being. Some of it is based on if they've got some tolerance to the drug because they've had it before, or this is the first time they've ever taken it. You, you can develop a tolerance to opiates over time. So a first time taker is at more risk. A smaller person is at more risk. And you also just have to understand these illicit fentanyl pills, there's no quality control on them. We don't know how much is actually in it. It might be a small amount, it might be a large amount. And, and so it's, it's very difficult to tell, but it's a matter of minutes from the point you stop breathing to the point you lack oxygen, that you have brain damage, your heart changes rhythms, it stops and you die. Let's underscore when you said you don't know how much is in the illicit prescription drug. Right. It doesn't take very much. It doesn't. Um, there are appropriate uses for fentanyl in the hospital. It's, it's a pain medicine I've given for my entire career, IV, that helps people. It helps people with cancer. It helps people with surgical pain. The problem here is it's been appropriated in an illicit way and in a highly concentrated way. The pills we're talking about today that kill people are hundreds of times stronger than the doses we give in the hospital. So your child can be taking a pill that's hundreds of times stronger than a surgical patient would get when they're in significant pain. How long has fentanyl been used in this illicit manner? It's fairly recent. I think this is an issue of the last few years. I, I wish I'd picked up on it faster than I did. I started noticing cases at the start of this year. Both my observations clinically as a practicing emergency physician and then my work with the fire department where we had overdose patients and we started to hear stories about pills being involved. I'm used to seeing some prescription opiate overdoses, hydrocodone, hydrocodone like Vicodin and Norco and Percocet, but those were at prescription strength doses and people would take extra of those and cause an overdose. So prescription pills can still be harmful when taken when you take too many. What's different about fentanyl is one fentanyl pill is often much stronger than many of the prescription opiates put together. So there's not really an agricultural need. You don't have to have a field. You, you basically have to have a bathroom or closet and the, a, a pill press and a heater 
in the ability to mix. One person can do this. One person can produce tens of thousands of pills in a day. And each of these pills, one pill, has the chance to kill our children. So what's the cost of making a fentanyl pill? I would say the raw materials, mm -hmm. you're talking a few thousand dollars for all the raw materials. With a street value of God knows how much. Hundreds of thousands of dollars. This is the biggest profit margin drug we've ever seen. And that's, that's why it's, it's such a risk because there's so much money in it for the dealers. You know, in, in our other programs, we've talked to therapists, we've talked about how schools might address the issue. Mm -hmm. How are doctors, t are doctors talking to parents and grandparents and are um, pediatricians t taking the initiative to talk to their patients? Absolutely. We need to encourage every physician in there. Are they doing it? I think everybody's coming on board. I think it's taken a little while. And I think it can maybe catch us by surprise as physicians because this is a drug that we've used with success for patients for a long time. But in this highly concentrated fashion, it's completely unsafe. And there's, there's no place for it in, in, in this way that it's being used right now. So whether you're a pediatrician, a family practice doctor, any, any doctor that can have outreach to their community, we have to do exactly what teachers and coaches and the DEA and the police are, and that's we have to get the word out that one pill can kill. And if I, if I can get across any phrase today, I'm gonna to say what everybody else has said because I've seen it. I've seen one pill kill children many times in my job as an ER doc and many times in my job as an EMS medical director for Plano Fire. What age do you think you should start talking to your children about it? I think at least middle school, mm -hmm. but I think it's also reasonable to talk to kids in, on the older age of elementary school too. Some of it depends on your insight into what they're exposed to. Uh, I've seen some very insightful posters uh, placed in middle schools, and I think it's incredibly helpful to start getting the facts out there. You know, when, when we're talking to our kids, I often go talk and in high schools about um, the dangers of drinking and driving right before prom because we want kids to live through prom safely. And the reason we did that is because trauma is the number one killer of our children up until this year. This year, the number one killer of our children is fentanyl. So drinking and driving is absolutely important to continue to talk about, but the data supports pushing this conversation to the forefront right now. Take me into an assembly at a high school. Yeah. Are the students listening? Do they you are. feel that you have their attention? They are. I got to speak at Shattered Dreams at a few high schools this year. And I, I bluntly share with them that I've seen their, you know, kids their age die from this. And the message that I've got to get across to them that their parents have to, that everybody in the community is, is that you don't know what pill you're being handed. And fentanyl can be pressed to look like anything else. And so you cannot take anything that's not coming from directly from a bottle that your parents have reviewed with you. You don't know what's coming out of somebody's purse, out of somebody's satchel. You cannot trust it's what they say it is. It needs to be from your doctor and it needs to be reviewed with your parents. One of the things that I've gathered from our conversations is that everybody should have in their house or in their car Narcan. Mm -hmm. Do you agree? I do. I have it. There's no downside. You can't harm somebody with Narcan. Narcan reverses opiate overdoses. It doesn't, it doesn't harm anybody else. Let me add, so if somebody had a coronary attack, Mm -hmm. and you gave them Narcan because you weren't aware of that. Correct. That's okay. It is. Can't harm them. It's basically like water to everybody else. Mm -hmm. But if you've had an opiate overdose, it can block those receptors and help bring the person back. Okay, now something I don't understand is it works if you were taking Oxycodone or per 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 Percocet. But I've been reading about uh, Xylazine. Right. Which is really beyond my comprehension because it's a medicine that's used in veterinary medicine. Right. And people add fentanyl to that. Right. But Narcan will not work with that? 
So xylazine is a, is a tranquilizer typically used in veterinary medicine. I have veterinary friends who say it's very effective in its use as a tranquilizer to help, help sedate an animal for a procedure or an examination. When it's mixed with fentanyl, it potentiates fentanyl. Fentanyl is really powerful, but fairly short acting. When mixed with xylazine, it can increase the period of activity for fentanyl. Hmm. Narcan will, will reverse the respiratory depression that comes with fentanyl, with opiates in general, but Narcan does not reverse xylazine. So we may find that we have to, you know, if we thought it was just a fentanyl overdose and we gave Narcan, we may not get their breathing back as quickly because they still have respiratory depression from xylazine. Are you seeing this? I've seen it a few times, um, and I'll just say what it does to your skin is gross. Uh, what does it do to your skin? It tears up your skin. It, it, you know, it's often called crocodile skin, uh, but basically it will cause skin breakdown that looks like a third-degree burn. All right, so it is a, a pill that people would take as well. So you can do fentanyl mixed with xylazine in different forms. Um, it, it can be injected, and when it's mixed and injected, that's typically when it tears your skin up the most. Um, there's even an ability, unfortunately, to smoke fentanyl. And let's remind all of us that fentanyl is a valuable drug used for the right purpose. Correct. And tell us a bit more about that. I, we, uh, I continue, if I have a patient who's got a broken leg, a broken arm from trauma like a car wreck, that is a first-line medication because it provides quick pain relief for those that are in pain. There are fentanyl patches for pain. And, and how do you give it to them? IV. IV, yeah. okay. We can give it intranasal as well, but typically we give it IV. Uh, there's fentanyl patches for cancer patients who need pain relief because they have cancer throughout their bones. It's a valuable medicine when used appropriately. But, but it is. And when given, you say valuable medicine, I mm -hmm. saw that it's listed as one of the, by the World Health Organization, as one of the most valuable medicines. It's on the essential medication right, list. Essential. If you were right. to start a healthcare system in a country and you needed to put together a hospital that took care of trauma patients, you would put fentanyl in that hospital. What should our communities, our government be doing that they're not doing? I think we're getting better at education, but we, ha we cannot take our foot off the pedal right now mm -hmm. because with each year as kids go through school, they're going to face different pressures, and we need posters in schools. We need coaches and teachers talking about this. We need forums. We need physicians. We need everybody that's a community leader taking responsibility for this. We need to support our police officers as, as they look for the dealers for this. Um, and we need to not only educate kids that one pill can kill, um, we need to get kids to report to us as parents. I'm speaking as a parent now, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm in really endorsing what I heard the last group of parents talk about in talking to your teenagers that you know, if they know a friend's using, they've got to talk to somebody about that because if they don't, their, their friend's going to die because their young body can't handle this medication. I'd, I'd love to have the ability to test more easily for fentanyl. Uh, because we're on the front end of this crisis right now, testing is not easy and we need wider access to testing. Because um, you know, in the emergency department, we have what's typically called a urine drug screen, which mm -hmm. is an imperfect test. Um, and we could miss a fentanyl overdose with the testing we have in the ER Do based on our access? current access. Do you have access to the test strips? I don't. Because it's viewed as an illegal in, in the state of Texas? Um, I, I, I'll be honest with you, I don't know the legalities of it. it, it we typically turn to our police officer colleagues to do the testing mm -hmm. on that. But the challenge is we need, real, we need real time to be able to know. Because if that teenager, I mean, it could be any age, but I'll focus sure. on teenagers. If that teenager has survived a fentanyl overdose, and I don't know what they took, and they're not telling us, I would like to be able to have some evidence that I could look in their eyes and look in their parents' eyes and say, we know it was fentanyl, and I need to talk to you because this is going to kill you. But you just have to have the courage to keep asking your kids what's going on in your life, what are you doing, what are your friends doing, and you know, be a bit nosy with 
social media looking for different accounts. This is as much me as a parent as it is as doctor talking, but I can, having seen the horrible effects of this on the back end. Well, you're in a unique situation. Yeah. How many teenagers do you have? Three. Yeah. Well, I want to thank you so much for being on our program and, and sharing your the wealth of your experience. Thanks My a lot. Pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. As we continued our discussion about fentanyl, one pill kills. It is such a privilege for us to welcome into our studio three parents who lost their children due to fentanyl poisoning. First, Jerry Horton, thank you so much for being with us. I look forward to hearing about your daughter, Jessie, and Stephanie and Ryan, thank you as well. Um, I got to see the film about your daughter, Sienna, as well as seeing Sumner, Summer, and I wanna be sure we talk, talk about that. But first, both of your daughters had different backgrounds, and I think it really shows that fentanyl can touch any child, whether a child has had a, a history with addiction or whether a child that perhaps just made a mistake. So I'd like to hear more about your daughter and her path. Um, so Jessie was 23 when she passed away. Um, she had had issues with mental health, um, some mental health concerns and substance abuse um, issues um, for a couple of years. And she was um, living with her boyfriend and it was his birthday weekend and they chose to um, partake in drugs. And unbeknownst to her, she took what she thought was Oxycontin and it was fentanyl and it took her life. And was she with her boyfriend? She was with her boyfriend. Did he take it? I don't know. You don't know. And what about your daughter? Um, Sienna, she took it. Um, it was given to her by a friend. Her friend was there. It was in our house. Um, both, both of us were there. And um, I checked on them. And that's when I found Sienna with blue lips. She, um, she was gone at that moment. Um, I did try to do CPR. I could not save her. Her friend uh, was making some gurgling sounds, mm -hmm. and um, CPR was done on her. I d had a fr friend that was visiting, and mm -hmm. she did CPR on her friend, and she did survive. But um, that's how quick it can be. I mean, there was no, there was there was there's no warning. Like they were just downstairs eating food, running around like silly sixteen year old girls can, and um, it's just that quick. And what did they think they were taking? They thought they were taking a Percocet, and... Um, Do you know how they got it? They got it from school, from another kid. Yes, her um, friend bought it from a Plano senior student who was a drug dealer, and um, they have caught him, but it just it goes to show. I mean, you, you get it from your friend. You trust your friends. Don't trust your friends when it comes to pills or anything that doesn't come from a pharmacy. And Ryan, I've been a father of a 16-year-old, and you talk about don't get in a car with a, a drunk driver mm -hmm. and, you know, don't take drugs. Did you have these discussions with your daughter? All the time. Yeah, we did. I mean, all basically from, you know, the earliest ages, we were talking about drugs and alcohol and, you know, just the threats of being a kid. And, you know, mm -hmm. you, you don't want to scare a kid to where they're petrified and don't want to leave the house. But, you know, we told stories. We had reminders about drugs and we even, you know, talked about fentanyl. I think a few months we'd heard a couple stories about mm -hmm. people dying of fentanyl. We didn't know that it was coming around in poison pills, so we didn't say, watch out for perks, they're actually fentanyl. But we talked about mm -hmm. deadly fentanyl and people are dying of it and these other drugs. So, yeah, but we worried about her. She was a driver. She had a car. We were worried about that. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's so many things to worry about with a kid and a teenager who's out experimenting and living, in, you know, an adult lifestyle. And uh, unfortunately, it didn't... It, it didn't prevent her from making a mistake. Do you think it made a big difference that it was just a simple pill versus, you know, perhaps uh, going out and using a syringe? Absolutely. Um, she she would never she would never take in heroin or cocaine or meth or any of those hard drugs. She, she didn't know 
what she was taking. She thought it was a Percocet. It came from her best friend. These are prescription pills that many of us might have had um, at one point if we came home from a surgery, um, Xanax, Adderall. These are all name brands that kids recognize. They don't think that they are taking something that's 50 times more potent than heroin. They don't know that fact. Um, and that's what we're really trying to get across is these kids don't think they're taking fentanyl. They think they're taking just a prescription pill, and it's way more deadly. Was that the case with your daughter, too? So with my daughter, um, strangely enough, um, a week prior, the last time I saw my daughter, which was on Labor Day of 2021, um, we had a conversation because she had started opening up to me about her drug use, and so we were talking, and fentanyl came up. And she told me, Mom, I would never take fentanyl. I'm scared of it. I know what it'll do. I would never take it. Yes. And so I know that she wouldn't have knowingly taken it. Um, so she trusted whoever it was that she got it from, and we don't know for sure. We have suspicions of where it came from, but we can't prove that. Um, but she trusted the person she got it from, or she wouldn't mm -hmm. have taken it. And so very similar to Sienna's yeah. case, where she got it from her friend, you know, mm -hmm. They don't know. I mean, there's a trust level there that's already yeah. been established, and so they're they're just trusting. And so it's very important, as Stephanie just said, to educate your children that you cannot take anything and else it comes from your parent or it comes from a pharmacy mm -hmm. because who you're getting it from probably doesn't know where it even came from. Stephanie and Ryan, what has been the reaction of your daughter's friends from this? I will tell you one thing. And they, their parents. And their parents. Um, after Sienna's death, we had her friends that were coming over, friends of her parents, um, neighborhood people to give us um, support. They were shell-shocked. They did not know. Her friends did not know that this stuff was in the school. And it, it, was, it wasn't being sold as fentanyl. It was being sold as these other pills, prescription pills. They did not know that. And I, th I th from Sienna's story, which we shared, um, we're, we shared it because we wouldn't be able to live with ourselves if one of her friends made the same mistake that Sienna did. I mean, if, if nothing good comes from this, we just want to make sure kids, adults, everybody knows this, this does not, it doesn't matter if you're a good kid, a bad kid. If you take a pill, you're taking your life. I mean, it's Russian roulette. I want to hear more about Summer and what she's doing. Yeah, I mean, so Summer, obviously, she, you know, she's been shocked and, you know, her, her world's been shaken by this, just like all of us, and she's grieving. How but old is she? She's 14. 14. And she um, she wasn't there that night, thankfully. We picked her up the next morning and had to tell her, mm -hmm. which was not a pleasant experience. Mm -hmm. But uh, she has, you know, she's quiet at times, but she's also spoken out about it at her school. She's mm -hmm. taken upon herself to speak to the counselors. She's spoken to the student body. And she makes a powerful case about all the things we're talking about. And I just think it's, it's so important. And we just, we really support her in doing that because coming from kids mm -hmm. makes such a big impact on other kids. They hear things from adults all the time. Don't do this, don't do that. Mm -hmm. But when they hear from a kid who was impacted like Summer was, it resonates. Yes. So do you know who the dealer was? Um, we do now. Okay. We do now. Um, but with Sienna's case, she didn't get it off of social media. She got it from her best friend. Right. Right. Um, who got it from another friend. What we have found through this is it's pretty shocking how many minors are caught up in these things. They're they're getting pills for their friends, and many of them don't even know that they're the ones that got the fentanyl and gave it to their friend. They just thought they were hooking them up. Yeah, and they're, they're addicts themselves right. because it's, if you don't die from this, you're going to become an addict. Call, everybody needs to know. Every parent needs to have this conversation with their child tonight that do not take any pills. In retrospect, maybe... If we would have had that conversation at the beginning of the year, if we would have known this drug was in the school and it was being called Adderall, Xanax, Percocet, maybe that would have made a difference. But it was off of our radar. And I just feel uh, you have, I mean, I think the big thing is educating. We have to educate our children. Is there anything that you wish you had done differently that might have made a difference? Um, for Jesse, um, I ask myself those questions all the time. Of course. I do have a lot of guilt um, because she was struggling with some different things. Um, and I wish I would have pushed her more. Kind of goes back to the, the conversation you had with the other folks earlier about um, holding them accountable 
and, and as an adult, because she was an adult, expecting her to take charge of doing those things. Because she would reach out to me and say, Mom, can you make me a doctor appointment? Mom, I want to, and I would, you know, I would tell her, you can do that yourself. You know, I don't need to do that for you. And I wish, knowing what was going on leading up to the, the, the prior months um, where she was struggling, that I would have stepped in and, and said, hey, come back home, let's do this. I, I beat myself up over that all the time. And, and it's, it's hard. Both of you are involved with an organization called Angel Moms, is Angel that Angel Moms, and we've also helped out with TXAF. Um, we're even- what, what is that? Texas Against Fent Fentanyl, it's out of Austin. Stephanie Turner started it because her son Tucker um, took, a, took what he thought was a Xanax and he died, or he got addicted and then he died later on uh, by a fake pill. Um, so we've been trying to help with the education piece of it. And um, we're even partnering with the local Girl Scouts. Um, Sienna's old Girl Scout That's great. friend is doing her gold award on peer-to-peer -peer fentanyl Jerry, education. Jerry, any, any last thoughts that you'd like to share? Um, I just want to stress the importance of talking to your kids and trying to get parents to understand they cannot have the mentality that it's not going to be their child. Mm -hmm. um, this is impacting anybody and everybody. And what you think you may know about your child, I guarantee you, you don't know. Mm -hmm. Children are very sneaky. Mm -hmm. Children are very um, easily influenced by their peers. Yes. And children are going through a lot of mental health issues that you may not even know about, mm -hmm. as in the case with my daughter. You know, she struggled with a lot of things that I didn't even know about that she struggled with in the past until she finally told me. And you've got to know what's going on with your kids. You need to monitor their social media. You need to make sure you're talking to them. You've got to talk to them about the drugs. Mm -hmm. You have to definitely stress to them not to take things from people, yeah. from yeah. other people. And of course, that was harder for you because you were dealing with an adult. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. I really admire your courage, and I know you're making a difference. Thanks for being on the program. We appreciate you watching today's program, a program that we believe is very important because as we've learned, one pill can kill. We're here talking about things that matter with people who care.